Mr. Perkovic, thank you for your time. And I guess you know how much love you have received and how much love Greek fans have for you through the years. Yes, I understand that, especially from Greece. And uh, I like to thank them uh, for that. And uh, it was really a pleasure and uh, pleasure for me playing in, in Greece for these two years. Yeah, and uh, people, especially Panathinaikos fans, still remember the 2009-2010 season. How you personally remember that season? Uh, it was uh, my most successful season in my life because we had triple crown. We were champions of the Europe. I was the best uh, center in Europe. So it was really one great, first of all, it was great uh, organization. Everything was great and great fans, but it was also uh, one of the best basketball I ever played, you know, because it was really great group of guys. It was really amazing all those names, you know, and uh, and uh, it's probably I like to remember many times, you know. Sometimes I speak with some, with uh, you know, when I get chance with some of my friends and everything about that. So I get like the the, the most beautiful remembers from from those years. What what did you remember? Or what did you like most from that season? Except, except uh, the trophies and the whole successful, what the whole successful team. What did you like most about that season specifically? Uh, it was just uh, we were so together. We were like a family. We were like really like a family. It was really unbelievable. It was uh, from the moment I get there, uh, when the guys called me and kind of let's go hang out, you know, shout us. Uh, Dimitri, uh, Mike Batiste, you know everybody. You remember everybody. So it was, it was, it was really great. It was like we were like a family, really like a true family. And uh, after Panathinaikos, it came the NBA. It was the ultimate dream. It was the main reason that you left Panathinaikos after that season. Yeah, because uh, it was um, it was for me to go there or to Europe, but uh, you know I was like, okay, let me. Let me try something different, you know, because in Europe, really, it was like, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, when you had everything, I'm like, okay, let me try another step, you know, to to, to do it. So, it was, it was, uh, it was kind of some next step for me, my life and basketball life, of course. As a Montenegro player who represents his country into the NBA, I guess it was at that time that you played in the NBA, it was way more difficult than this time that international players played in the NBA? Um, I mean, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, they don't really, in that time, they didn't really pay attention on the, on uh, like success, whatever you make in Europe, you know. They were like, okay, it's okay, but you're still out. So basically you start from zero. <laughs> Again, you, let's go do the workouts and everything, you know. So for me it was tough. The first year was really tough. And I call my agent. And I'm like, I'm going back. Like this, 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 this is not, this is not that what I expected. You know, I expected something way more different. Like, so he's like, come on, you know, take it easy another year. You know, stay calm. I'm like, come, come. It's no problem. I'm working. I'm doing everything. Whatever I need, I'll do whatever. But you know, uh, uh, you just I, in that first year, it was. It was really the, the situation so I didn't get used to, you know, so it was really tough that, that first year. Do you feel after six, six, seven years in the NBA that you earned the respect of the whole league, of your opponents, of the fans as well? Yeah, I mean, even after three years, you know, you, you can tell how the other players treat you and the referees and the team that I don't respect maybe even after two, three years. And uh, after that, it was really, then was was easy for playing, you know. Then was really, you know, like, then was like really easy. It was, it was really nice and everything was good. And, 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 and it was nothing, you know, after, after that was really, you know, really enjoying playing and everything. Did you feel uh, those days that you were the best big in Europe, the most dominant big in Europe? Because in that season, 2008, 9-10 with Panathinaikos, you were the most dominant big in Europe. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, uh, you know, I came from Partizan. It was kind of huge work. We always do workouts and everything. Panathinaikos was my next, was kind of next step with Željko. And uh, really Željko kind of, 
use me and uh, you know him he was like the next guy who make me like it the most because it's not same playing Euroleague uh, now is that's now way different than back then you know partisan back when I was playing had budget for like maybe 2.53 million and Paratinaik was good 10 times more so it was like really different because partisan you play to go to top 16 in Panathinaikos, you go to win the to win the Euroleague. So it was like different. So I was like kind of worrying how I'm gonna adapt. But it was really great, and of course, you know, the, the, uh, everybody helped me, and the, they kind of, you know, show me how how to do it and everything. So it was, you know, it's just great feeling when you feel it like you're dominant and when you're helping the team, of course. You mentioned a name, Zeljko Bradovic. <laughs> I think it's not just the name. It, no. I, it was not just he was not just a coach for no. you, right? No, no, he's uh, he's the best coach that ever coached me, and probably not probably, but for sure the best European coach of all time. And he was not just a coach; he was like uh, everything in one. You know, he was uh, a mentor, he was a friend, he was coach, he was like everything. Whatever you need, he was there, and uh, he expected that back. So you know. Uh, he was just, he's just, like you say, he's not the name. He's like, uh, you know, he's just uh, a great, great guy. Of course, the best coach in Europe. And uh, really, uh, when you have like, when you came to the kind of same mind with him, it's it's just easy to play with him. You know, sometimes I look at these guys and they're like, kind of, you know, but they just need to understand him. And it's after that, it's easy. You mentioned that he expects from the players to be great, but from personal standpo standpoint, what makes him so special? Uh, makes him so special that he he really understands the game, and uh, he's uh, he's uh, all this what's going with him. When you see him, like when you see him, whatever he <laughs> enters the room or whatever he goes, he's kind of you know you know that he's there. So you know, like all of that, he's just he's just like that that guy that that changed the game. You know, like when he put the, it was so funny. It was so many times she's like, "I'll make you the play. You'll be alone, and you need to score." That's I'll do my job. You do your job. So he's kind of you know when you kind of get to know him, he's pretty simple in those things. You know, and so it's it's like everything. It's not just one thing what's making special. He's special because there is so many things around him and so many things what he's doing that makes him special, you know, that makes him the best. It's not it's not just coaching, it's off the court, it's uh, talking to players, it's just everything, how he treats the players. That's the most important thing because it's not same to treat uh, some low league or European championship. You need to know how to adapt, how to... You know how to do things right, so people feel comfortable with you. I know that you have countless stories between you and George through the years, but have you got the most remarkable one? Can you share the most remarkable one? The first that came to your mind? Yes, yes, I had that for sure. So uh, we finish. Uh, the story starts when we play semi-final of the Euro League against Olympiakos. And I was kind of nervous, my first Final Four and everything, and I'm alone by myself in the locker room. And he show up with his, uh, playing with his keys and uh, whistling some Jatak song or something like that, I don't know. And he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, you know, coach, you know, Final Four, Olympia, because you're preparing for like months for Olympia, because, because you know, there you cannot lose against Olympia and everything. And uh, he's like, come on, just play like another game. So I go there and score like, I don't know, 17, 18, 19. I, I don't even remember now, really, the number. So the last offense, uh, I'm playing, I think, against Borussis. Yes. And he said, like, the ball go to, to Peck. So he throw, they throw me the ball. So I remember even the move. I went two dribbles and I make a spin. And I was so close to the basket, so I was like, should I shoot? With the right, with the left, so I go with the right, and the ball go like this, and the ball just. So I turn around, I keep running because I was like thinking it's, it's a basket. So I see everybody, oh, and I turn around and I see the basket was gone, and uh, 
we won the game, after that we won the championship. So, then <laughs> seven, eight years after that, he of course didn't say nothing, but everything was great. <laughs> so seven, eight, nine years after that, I was in, uh, we was in Guca, in Serbia, you know, with the trumpets and all that. So he came. And uh, of course, we are even now, we are great friends. And so there he came and he starts, you know, calling some uh, songs and uh, he's him like coach, he's like with him. Now you two, now you one, now he. So I'm looking at him like for an hour and he's like 20 or 30 of us friends, you know. So nobody want to disrupt him, the, the, you know, don't wanna disrupt him because he's jail. So at one point I turn around to him, I'm like, come on, just let us order whatever we want to order, some song, you know, we want to listen to something. In that point, he turned around to me and he said to me, so it was like, uh, after like probably eight, nine years, he turned around and he looked at me and he said, and you, when you missed that layup against Olympia, because did I tell you something? <laughs> no, huh? He just turned around and walked away. And I was sitting for like an hour like this, looking and I'm like, how is this possible? <laughs> so that's like the most remarkable stories. We have some more, but this is like something. Does that how he he's like he remembers something like eight nine years ago and it was really it was like <laughs> every time my friend said how he sits you down because he was like oh ah oh, immediately he's like I was sitting like this for like probably an hour you know like I don't know what happened I'm like what <laughs> how you pull it now like that you know it was like ten years he's like but that's really cool. Uh, also, Panagos fans still remembers 2009 2010 final four. Do you know? Do you uh, know what? Do you think why Panathinaikos fans remember so bad this uh, fi that final four? I think it was because the competition was so strong, and because uh, in um, uh, top eight we was uh, one one in uh, in uh, Athens against uh, Montepaschi, mm -hmm. and it was so tough because uh, I remember it was how everybody was thinking they were going to lose, but we won two straight in uh, in Italy. And of course, it was Olympiacos and it was Ceska, it was like in their prime, that was really good. So it was like, it was so many things that was like, I don't know, like just make it special, you know. It was it was, it was so hard to win because, it, of course, we win it because Ceska shot the ball and he missed it and that was like, so it's it's just so many, so many things that, that make it so special. Through the years, did you had any offer or any talk with Panathinaikos who came back in Greece? After that, no, 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 no. I never, I never talked to them, and you know, I never, never because after I think five years, I started suffering my injury. So it was like after that, it was not even talk about that. I was just trying to get healthy, but it was not not even talk. Mm -hmm. I understand and. Yeah. You played Olympiakos versus Panathinaikos derby games. You played Partizan Red Star derby games. W which one of them is more intense from your perspective, and why? Uh, they're both intense on, on their way, you know, separate way. I, I mean, most of the time it's it's same, but you know, um, even in Serbia and in Greece. Everybody's just talking about Panathinaikos Olympiakos. He's talking already about Partizan and Red Star. So basically, it's pretty much the same. You know, the same intense, the same rivalry, the same. Even even though we are like friends with the many opponent players, but it came to that point. You know that that you know. For now, I'm living in Montenegro and in Serbia. You know, and uh, we, everybody's just talking you know, about Partizan Red Star and everything. Ne pita me ništa za tebe. Uh, you know, but it's pretty much it's when you take a look, it's it's just you know it's pretty much the same li rivalry. It's it's really it's it's intense both. Like you know, in Belgrade it was same. You know, when is uh, they were they were playing Partizan Red Star, still no fans. They are coming. They block the city. Same was over there. So it's pretty much same. Which one of them you enjoyed most? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I enjoy every time when I beat them, <laughs> when I when I beat them, you know, with Partizan with Panathinaikos. There was like I, I don't have any like some specific one, you know. But probably what was my 
something that I remember, you know, because we've been there many times. It was the 2019 first year before, like Christmas or something. No, Christmas. Yes, Christmas. That we played them in Inoaka, and I think that's my first game, like official game, Panathinaikos and Piakos, and I think scored there like 20 points or something. And it was like, like we beat them easy, so it was it was like that was like one of the games I remember. How big uh, was the impact of uh, Yanakopoulos brothers to you? It was really big. They were like uh, even my father mentioned them all the time, you know, because when I get there to sign, my father came with me, and it was like. Um, And uh, he was she was so surprised how they were like nice guys, nice persons and everything. And really, really, they're like it was it was some great time when they were in charge of the Panathinaikos. I believe it's so even now. But uh, then was like they were like two super, super nice guys. And now you are president of uh, Montenegro Basket Federation. What is how how big is their responsibility to? To grow the basketball in in the country, uh, we still, uh, you know, Montenegro is known for changing the governments. Ever, a little bit we are changing, so we are kind of now in a process process of building another government or whatever. I don't know even more. So for us, you know, we are trying to stay stay away from the politics and everything. But you know, sometimes it's just not possible. But I mean. If if this is not success, what we make it that we are in you know, a 16 on the world, I don't know what it is, you know, even with our possibilities, with our small base, with everything. But I believe that these governments start to figure out uh, finally that even the government before they also help. But this one, I'm happy that you know, we are the country with a really small budget for basketball and everything so I see I can see that they see the potential of, of us and growing and everything you know for the for the basketball so hopefully you know they're gonna keep going it and uh, give some maybe some more increase so we can keep going and develop you know these guys because we get few guys who are gonna play a few more years and then after you know it's gonna be the change so now we're just now starting you know just to 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 kind of trying to 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 improve everything, whatever we can. Nikola Vucevic plays in the NBA. Yeah. He's the best representer right yeah. now of, uh, of, the, of the country. Marko Simonovic played in the NBA. Now he returned to Red Star. Uh, do you feel that uh, the country has future ahead of uh, ahead of you? Yes, yes, of course. We have a big future. Vucevic, he's the, the, the great player and the great guy, and the, he's really doing the he's really doing the the great job and. Um, And uh, he's playing a very good championship, and I believe that. Um, I mean, I'm not believing. I'm saying that he's probably the best representative in this point. You know, of our country. You know, he's playing really good in NBA. <coughs> But we have still some some young players who are doing really good, and hopefully in some future, you know, we're gonna try to kind of connect them to the to the national team and try to try to make them, you know. Uh, our next, you know, the guys who are in charge of the national team and everything. So hopefully, I mean, I know that we have a young, good young guys, but you know how it is. Always, the, you always uh, 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 depend uh, of how they're gonna grow up in their teams because we are as a national team. You know, you just have them like for now. Like you have them like 45 days or month and a, something like that. Not even two months. You cannot really develop them, you know. You need to prepare them for competition. So, uh, how it's going, you know. We hopefully that the, the, the team is going to develop them how we expect, and then that we they're going to have a good future with the national team. If Nikola Pekovic had had the opportunity to play in today's basketball, how good he could be? <laughs> I don't know. I really didn't. I didn't think about that. Uh, the basketball has changed, but I can see that you know. One point it was really changing. Now I see it's going back. You know, again on a, playing on a low post. One point everybody was shooting and running. It was like really <laughs> crazy. But I can tell now everybody's. You know, now it's going back again. You know, to be how it's supposed to be basketball. You know, playing hard, playing tough. So I don't know. I didn't really think about that. And the last question. Let's talk about your tattoos. You have yeah. some really remarkable. Yeah. What uh, what those tattoos represent to you? Uh, It represent to me the certain times of my life, you know, you know, many times like when I played 
felt like a warrior, you know, going out there, playing hard and everything. So most of those tattoos represent that because how I was acting, how I was doing and everything. So for me, it's uh, like everybody said, did you regret? I'm like, no, I'm the, the guy who didn't regret anyway. So basically, you know, I just I just like them and I never regret so far any of them. I, I know I will not regret. <laughs> Have you got any favorite one? Mm, I don't know, I like them all. <laughs> Yes. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chris.